Maria with Evidence, and uh, welcome to our webinar this fine Thursday. We're sitting here in a million degrees up in Canada in Vancouver, BC. It's hot. We're not used to it. Um, today, we're going to be taking a peek at scanning and, you know, do you scan, do you not scan? Uh, for those of us that have joined some of our dentist series previously, um, I've, you know, connected with clinicians and such to kind of talk about what that looks like on the dentist side. And today what we're doing is we're going to kind of combine the two. It's, you know, the benefits on the clinician side versus, you know, how that works for your lab and how your lab can kind of support you on your digital journey. So fortunately today we have our guest star, Graz. She's the general manager at Frontier Dental Lab up here in Vancouver, BC, Canada. And uh, she's going to have some insight on kind of the benefits of this whole journey and, and you know, how they can support and, and any kind of limitations or you know, uh, other things that we, we can take a peek at while we're here with you today. We've got about 30 minutes. Uh, you can send us questions. You can send us a chat. You know, uh, if you want to send us stuff after by email, we'll have all of that ability. So let's get right in it. Kras, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, what brought you into the world of digital dentistry? Okay, so um, first of all, thank you for inviting me again, and I'm always happy to be here with the Evident team. Um, so yeah, I, uh, I qualified as a dental technician in 2004 in Poland, and then I decided to move to England, where I worked as a um, dental assistant for four years. Um, then I moved back to my original qualification, which was, the, uh, you know, dental technology. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I trained classically. I started from model room to dentures, wax work, um, crown and bridge, ceramics. And then in 2012, I decided to learn more about digital dentistry because it was just like starting and everyone was talking about the scanners and everything. So the hype. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, so I, I started from the basic. And, and as the softwares were upgrading, I was learning new techniques, new new kind of you know ins and outs of, of the lab side. And then uh, I wanted to know more about intraoral scanners as well because you know they, it's all connected. Mm. Like you know dental um, uh, dental lab, they, if if they have a scanner, but dentist doesn't have a scanner, then obviously they have to do still traditional way of model uh, making and everything, and then scan it. So you know I just wanted to know a little bit more about both sides so yeah yeah from the sounds of it that you've got a kind of a really great kind of full circle experience platform yeah you know, you've been in the clin clinical side you've been in the lab you've done the analog you're into this like really heavy digital world as well and so it's really great that we'll be able to get some you know some I think we're gonna have a good chat guys <laughs> so let's start with this first poll those of you out there in the world uh do you own a scanner and then, you know, the number two question is, which scanner do you currently use? So why don't you take a moment to fill this out and kind of give us an idea of kind of what, who we have with us today, what we should cover, uh, and so on and so forth. So let's give this a go and see what we've got here. The results are coming. Okay, so we have 63% of you own a scanner. Amazing. Um, and I think what's actually particularly interesting is that of those, 50% of you joining us today own the Medit. Uh, great. That's awesome. And then we've got 13% with 3Shape and 13% with iTero. So those are typically kind of like, you know, the three major scanners out there. You know, Medit's done this really big push recently. Um, you know, they've released their, their new scanner. They've done all that good fun stuff. And then we have our traditional, you know, three shape and iTero that have been around for, for quite a long time. And they've got different variations of models and so on and so forth. So, um, you know, for those of you that, that don't have a scanner, let's just kind of start from here. Like what is scanning? And that's basically taking the use of an intraoral scanner and digitizing your patient's mouth by a series of photos. And so, you know, that's a really, really great kind of helpful thing because as a patient, my least favorite thing is having all of that gunk, be it in an alginate or PVS material, shoved into my mouth while I'm trying to control my tongue and, you know, sit there. It's like PVS is what, like four minutes? It's torture. So the scanner industry has really allowed for you guys as clinicians to be able to kind of provide a different type of care for your patients that gives you the opportunity to get all of that junk out of the mouth and to be able to give them a really nice spa-like experience with the intraoral scanners, regardless of what scanner it is that you're needing. 
So uh, us here at Evident, you know, one of the great things is, is that we accept these intraoral scans. We are able to go ahead and like, you know, digitally design crowns, bridges, dentures, all that kind of stuff. So that we're able to kind of control that accuracy a little bit more than what we could in those uh, PBS impressions. Mm -hmm. So guys, you could probably chime in on this. You've seen both the digital side and an anal uh, the analog side. If you were to make a denture, oftentimes, you know, there's dentists that'll take it as a PBS and there's dentists that take it in the alternate. And I know in my lab time that we used to get impressions wrapped in like 10 pounds of paper towel, soaking wet. Um, and because, you know, they took it at the end of the day and they wanted to keep it hydrated, but you know, there's certain limitations with that, which can affect the accuracy of it. Well, with the traditional impression, sometimes uh, where you have those perforation holes in the uh, impression tray, sometimes they don't work and they don't catch the, the material, so they flick off the, 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 uh, tray. the tray. So obviously that kind of shrinks and doesn't give us accurate um, model. And then obviously, you know, we're trying to kind of make it work, but then, you know, there's always a little bit discrepancy. With intraoral scanning, you don't actually have that kind of risk because, you know, whatever you take the scan of, that, that's what we get. It's, it's just a digital image, like a 3D image, and, and it, it can't shrink, right? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> there's no shrinking there. Um, but, the, like, you know, something to, to consider too in the intraoral scanning is that a lot of the protocol specifically to, like, say, crown mm -hmm. where, you know, you should be courting or, you know, doing something, whatever your, your protocol is for those preps, you know, making sure that your prep is clear because again remember if you can't see it with your eyes you're not able to pick it up with your intro scanner but at the same time you know courting is really you know, quite important for those PBS impressions and equally in that intro scan so um, those are all things to consider as well as that it, it, it allows you the flexibility to have these really accurate um, scans you know like so for example with the meta you're looking at 11 microns of accuracy in a full arch scan which is incredible uh, you know so you're not dealing with that trinket you're not dealing with the trays you're not dealing with shoving all that in your patient's mouth like there's a lot of really great benefit mm -hmm. um, for you as a clinician as well as for the lab because yeah. then you're not having to call the office and say can you do that again please yeah exactly. and then the disappointment in your patient to have to come in and do that again <laughs> Oh. Yeah, well, this is very important to actually use the retraction clock when you're taking the PBS impression or the intraoral scan. But after taking the impression, the doctors can say, okay, well, in the PBS, I can see the margin, but then we pull the model and we say we can't actually see it. Yeah, yeah. With yeah. the intraoral one, if you scan it and the margin is exposed because of the retraction clock and the doctor can see it, they can say, oh, well, I, I can see it, so they will see it. So you, you can see this like actual image much quicker than you know in the PBS impression for sure um the other thing to note too is that with the intro scan say for example you are struggling with the patient and you know you want your lab to review your scan right away you can send it in a variety of ways like you know there's the meta link from edit there's the three shape communicate there's the my line for itero um, itero has made some good improvements with mm -hmm. you know trying to release the data a little bit quicker um but you know they're there are still some limitations there but you can call your lab right away and they can pull up your scan and you can have a live conversation with them like this, you don't have to wait for those, you know, few hours for it to, you know, be picked up or shipped or poured and so on and so forth in order to get that information. So it can definitely speed up your process. Your turnaround times are going to be, you know, a lot, a lot quicker for sure. Yeah. Um, and you know, you're you're kind of just kind of speeding up that process and providing that accuracy that you know you guys as a lab mm -hmm. can benefit from and, and appreciate as well yeah we actually uh, get uh, phone calls quite often that the doctors send a scan and, and say okay i send it via this portal can you just quickly check it we can just pull it up and say oh well actually we can't see the distal marginal there's a there's a gap in the in the inside the ledge of the prep so we won't be able to mesh it and it's okay well i'll just add this this area they don't have to rescan the whole map they can just add the area which isn't clear mm -hmm. and with the with the traditional impressions as well um lots of patients have a, a really bad gag reflex and it's not very comfortable for them and sometimes they just like if we have to uh, redo the impression they, they kind of the patients are kind of scared okay well i don't want to do that again and, you know because yeah, all totally. this material in my mouth yeah. so it's awful yeah it's terrible and uh, we've got a couple of questions so i did touch base on um, whether or not scanning is really more accurate than an impression and the answer is yes um, what happens if the scan isn't good? So again, as Graz and I have just been talking mm -hmm. about, with the ability to uh, communicate with your lab right away, if you do have a question relating to a scan, your patient's still in the chair and you can touch up that scan immediately with that conversation. Um, with a lot of these softwares as well, specific to like undercuts and occlusal reduction, you know, that's really great for the labs too, because, you know, 
not going to have to you know, give your client say, hey, you know what, the types of clearance are able to do the adjustment closing or adjustment closing closing. That's all stuff that can be analyzed right in that uh, scan. So I think that that's really, really important. Uh, I, oh, sorry, one second. I am having a message here from my team that you may all be having a problem hearing us. Hopefully that ends up being a little bit better. Our team, can you confirm? Perfect. Okay. I have no idea what you guys heard, so I'm just going to quickly do it again. So what happens if the scan isn't good is that because you're able to communicate with your lab right away, you know, you can retake that scan with the patient sitting in the chair. And in the off chance that you do have to bring your patient back after they've left, you know, the, the time that you're having to book in the patient's chair is gonna be a, little, a less, you know, you're gonna be champions in your scanning world. You're gonna be able to get those scans done in, you know, one to two minutes. And then, you know, Bob's your uncle and you're on your way, right? So there's definitely a lot of benefit in having those intro scanners in the office and, you know, supporting your patients and the labs that you're dealing with as well. Um, you know, other things that you guys consider too is that, you know, for shipping and stuff, you're not having to receive models. You're not having to do any of that stuff. It's only just sending it back. So again, turnaround yeah. times quicker. And exactly. And especially if we like uh, schedule in advance, like the dentist calls us, like, look, I have this urgent case. I need it within five days, but he lives on the other side of the, of the country. Uh, he will tell us exactly what time we'll receive the scan. We can quickly design it, print the model. Uh, or don't print them all, whatever they want, and um, and just you know have it back, um, you know on time whenever they need it. So it saves a lot of time. Yeah, absolutely. So there's better predictability, uh, better for all of that kind of stuff. Um, you know, it's it's one of those things where uh, the sky's there's just no limits. Whatever that thing is, sky's <laughs> the limit or whatever it is. Um, I'm Even not sky is not limited this time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Limitless, everything's limitless. Um, so, you know, you you have a lot of flexibility. And now too, also as the accuracy, you know, back in the day when the scanners were still first kind of coming out, a lot of the labs were printing the digital models and then mm -hmm. doing a check fit on those models and stuff. And now with, you know, the advances in scanning, there's often times where you're not needing to print models or anything. And, mm -hmm. you know, that ends up decreasing the storage that you're needing uh, in your office. Uh, you can repurpose that for other things. Um, that allows you to kind of just really, really commit to kind of really great fits and things. Um, it, it, it helps improve the relationship with your lab as well, because then, you know, there's this confidence that mm -hmm. builds, like once you kind of go into that modelist world and your crowns are just popping right in there, it's amazing. Um, and yeah, there's just, there's a lot of really, really great, um, you know, benefits to that internal scanning. Um, I've got a question here. How exactly does scanning lead to less remakes uh, just because it's more accurate? Again, all things that we're talking about here, it's, you know, scanning gives you immediate access to the data to be able to double check if it's going to be okay, to be able to go and reach out to your lab if you've got any problems. Um, you know, all of that kind of stuff is, is super, super, super important in ensuring that, you know, that remake number decreases. So I know I've worked, used to work in a digital lab for, for a bunch of years up here in Vancouver, BC as well for 22 years of prosthetic lab coordinator. And, uh, you know, part of the thing with the digital scanning world was that, yes, it decreased your remakes, not only just for the lab side, because you're able to, to fabricate things based on that kind of an accurate scan rather than a distorted impression, right? Yes, for sure. And but the most important thing is, I think it's communication. Mm, huge. <laughs> exactly. You're on it, grass. <laughs> Lay it on us. <laughs> Yeah, and um, it's like um, if we can kind of justify the issue within the first two minutes while the patient is still in the chair or something is wrong and we can like be right on it, it's, it, it increases the, the chance that there won't be any remakes. Right. <laughs> um, so, you know, obviously you can't predict the bacterial failure like crack or something. Um, so, you know, we're just talking about the... The digital side of the design and, and production, not the materials. So, right, <laughs> you know, don't put me on that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, good point on that with the communication, because you know, um, regardless of, of what direction you're going to your your dental practice.
practice, it's really important to have a good relationship yeah. with your lab because, mm. um, you know, they're kind of an extension of you. Um, and that's always kind of, I think, the, the, the way that we kind of think about it is that, you know, your success, we're, labs are, sorry, I'm at evident. Uh, labs are successful because dentists are successful and dentists are successful because they're able to provide the information that they need for the lab to be successful. Yeah, so it's a really good partnership. Patients happy as well. Yeah, 100%. Happy patient, happy dentist. Happy dentist, happy, dentist, happy lab. Yeah. <laughs> Those are all really great things. So in your opinion, Graz, is the hype worth it? On the lab side, is that a yes or a no on you? That's most definitely yes. Okay. Yes, for sure. I mean, um, from my point of view as well, running a lab, it actually makes my life easier because, the, well, first of all, the turnaround times are um, quicker. Yeah. And it takes less labor, less materials. And it it's just it makes my life easier J just to have that digital flow from start to finish. For sure. And so equally for the clinician side, we've got a question here. How, how will spending 20 grand help you save money? Well, so there is kind of like a return on investment that you kind of have to kind of assess, right? So what kind of impression materials are you using? Is it PVS? Is it alginate? Is it both, um, you know, with regard to, um, you know, your cotton balls and all that kind of stuff. So Yes, some of that is still needed when you're doing your interval scanning, but the amount of money that you'll spend uh, on impression material, it, it can be insane depending on what type of practice you have. And, you know, the, the ability not to have to bring that in, not have to worry about expiry dates and all that kind of stuff. And, and again, distorted impressions and, and, you know, dealing with the patients that are, you know, they gag, they do all that kind of stuff, you know, it's a bit of a nightmare. Um, so all in all, what you know, what is the benefit and how can it save you the money is exactly that, is that you're no longer having to do the impression material. Um, you're not having to store models. So depending on where you've got all of your models for those, I think it's mm -hmm. seven years or whatever it is that you, you guys have to, to store those models. You don't need to do that. There's very little waste. A lot of these scanners out there no longer have kind of like a plastic sleeve tip. They have autoclavable tips. I know specifically to the medics, one that I use, um, they, it has an autoclavable tip. It can be done specifically to the 700. There's like a short autoclave time and a longer autoclave time. You know, the tips are not hugely expensive. They can be used a hundred times. Um, so it's, you know, it's one of those things that uh, it is definitely, uh, you know, there's value to that because you're not having to, to store all of these materials in, in office for that. Um, so, and then it saves you time as well when you're seeing your patients, uh, you know, a lot of the workflow that we kind of work through here at Evident, you know, for example, if I'm onboarding a new client with the scanner and I'm doing some training with them, we kind of go through where to scan, how to scan, you know, introduce it into hygiene, get that initial scan going along. So that then say, for example, you know, that new patient that's come in and they're all of a sudden wanted to do in-office bleaching drays, if you don't have zoom, or, uh, zoom whitening or anything in your office, then you can initially just take that scan that you already did when they came in for their new patient exam, send it over to Graz. She can then print the models, make trade, whatever it is that's needed without having to bring your patient back in. So there's a lot of really, really great things that you can do with those initial scans. Um, with regard to, say, for example, you're doing a crown prep and you're needing to make a temporary or anything, and you say you've got a printer in your office, you can actually print that initial scan that you had already done long ago, use that as a temporary so that you've got all of that already ready to go before your patient even comes in. Um, you know, the workflow with the scanner as well, with regard to using your assistants and your staff to do a lot of the scanning for you and you focusing only on the prepped areas on implant scans and stuff like that really helps control your time as well so that you're focusing on kind of supporting the patient and doing what you do best um, versus, you know, whatever your assistants can do to kind of like speed up that workflow for you in office. So there's a lot of different ways that you can set up an intro scanner in your office and the benefits to it. And it's kind of, it can be a bigger conversation. Um, there's another question here. What, what would the turnaround time be for a single unit case using a scanner versus an impression? Perhaps that might be something that you can answer. Um, yeah, if it's just a single crown, uh, it can reduce the turnaround time from 10 working days to, um, you know, six working days. Um, if we're talking about like more full mouth restorations, it can, it can save you the whole week because normally we ask for three weeks with the digital side, we, we can do it within two weeks. Mm -hmm. um, so, but also with um, with time saving, it's when we're doing a um, smile designs and we have in the first stage is a di diagnostic wax up, we can do it digitally. And then it saves uh, dentist time, the chair time as well, because um, okay, well, we send them the digital image with the uh, 3D viewer, 
And then they can have a look at it, get the patients in, and while patient is in the chair, they can review it and do this kind of grass. You, you need to correct that because patient doesn't like it. We can do it within like five minutes, send the new image back and say, okay, do you like this? So then with, with traditional diagnostic wax ups, we have to send the models with wax on it. And then the patient has to come in, have a look at it. If they don't like it, they have to send it back, correct this. We have to send it back again. They have to get the patient back in. So it's kind of a, you know, back and forth work. With the digital flow, we can do it as, as the patient waits. Yeah, it's much more streamlined. Yeah, sure. exactly. Yeah, absolutely. And I know too that uh, um, with regard to digital scanning, like, you know, if you're doing a, a full multi case, you start with the diagnostic wax up, that wax up can then be converted to tabs. And then like, yeah. you know, depending on what scanner you have, if you've got a pre-op scan that you want to do once you've adjusted the temps and patients been wearing these temps for a while, you know, that's all something that can be bridged in with the original scan and in the original system and kind of keep on going. So it's a lot more of an easier flow and continuity with that in the world of internal scanning. So mm -hmm. huge benefits. And, you know, if for any of you that, that want to know uh, any more about kind of all of that, then, you know, we can definitely have side conversations with that as also. And we've got a question here, uh, does bleeding or the color of retraction cord affect the scan? So bleeding can cause a bit of scatter in your uh, scans. Um, on the lab side, what does that look like for you guys? It just looks like a digital glitch. So okay. it's not smooth, it's kind of like there's something going on there. But I think it's not blood, just blood, it's it's anything like, you know, so like any, yeah. any like a wet, wet surface. Um, so it's, but we, we always can like just say, okay, we well, can just rescan that area and if bleeding is too, uh, too high, then obviously they can maybe put a little bit of anesthetic to stop the bleeding and then put a little bit of an estrogen or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. yeah. So, and um, with the scanners, it is still important to ensure that, you know, bleeding is, is fairly well controlled. Um, you know, if you're doing any kind of digital purgage or anything like that, and the patient's a heavy bleeder, you know, you may not be able to do your crown prep right at the get-go. Uh, that may need to settle down before you can bring them in, retract, and kind of yeah. go from there. So, uh, you know, the, uh, there's so many different various situations that kind of present. Um, but with the, with the internal scanner, it, it, you're not limited. It's just kind of where in the workflow can, can you do that? So um, you know, hopefully that answers that a little bit. Um, the question here is, what uh, are all scanners built equally? Nowadays, I would say that the, generally speaking, a lot of the scanners out there do the job. There's, you know, a variety of different ones. You know, you've got your, your old school ones, Trio Cytero, you've got Prime Scan, you've got, you know, the Medit, you've got uh, three disc, uh, just, uh, you know, care stream, on cam, blue cam, all of that stuff that's kind of been in the industry for a long time. And really the difference between the physical scanning will be based on the accuracy of it. Yes. Um, but more importantly is the interface that communicates with the lab um, and how that ease of it is. Mm -hmm. Like say, like I mentioned earlier, iTero has kind of got a bit of an interesting situation with them because they have uh, the opportunity to kind of review and mark the margins and do all that and clean up the models mm -hmm. themselves. Um, and then up until maybe a year ago, a couple of years ago now? Yeah, a couple of years ago. A couple of years ago, they've actually made it so that uh, they're releasing that a little bit sooner to the labs rather than them doing the work. And then two days later, the lab getting the scan. So, you know, there's a variety of different things. But the, I'd say, aside from the software platform, but the biggest difference in your success with a $15,000 or a $50,000 scanner is your training and your support. I think it's really important. And also there's like the team buy-in and then there's all of these things and, you know, getting your staff on board and excited about all of that and, and really wanting to make that make that transition into that digital scanning world, I think is, is kind of the biggest thing to consider. Um, and then again, making sure that your partnerships with your labs are good, that they you know, are familiar with the digital journey and the workflow, so that all of that is a very nice, complete closed loop circle. Uh, in order to be able to be really successful mm -hmm. in that journey, hey? Yeah, and there's also uh, annual upgrades to the software on both um, clinical and then in the lab side. Mm -hmm. um, so when the first intraoral scanners came out, the dentist had to put a powder on the teeth, uh, which obviously affected the scan. So it was like, you know, we're talking like 10 years ago. But right now, um, the technology moves so fast that, you know, you have such an accurate scan. And while we go, if you invest in a scanner right now, it doesn't mean that, you know, you're stuck in this kind of software. The, the, the upgrades are coming every year. So, right. you know, it's, it's not just like, you know, it's a, it's a big investment, but it will pay for itself. Yeah, for sure. So things to consider uh, while you're on this journey is that, you know, like I mentioned, training and support communication with your lab. 
Um, you also want to uh, confirm fees. You know, a lot of scanners out there have fees for this and fees for that and fees for everywhere else. And, you know, there's some really, really great platforms out there like the Medit where, you know, it's an inclusive one-shot deal, one price. It includes a bunch of modules, continuous updates. The communicator with the lab is really easy. It's an open platform. You can export it. You can do multiple byte scans. You can do all that kind of stuff. Um, some of the other scanners out there do have some really, really great features, kind of depending on the direction you're going with your practice. Uh, so again, if you know, those are all kind of bigger conversations to have on your journey. Um, so that's super great. Uh, as we're kind of just wrapping up here, um, we had one person uh, send us a note. Uh, so can you turn around a digital diagnostic wax up and send it to me to show my patients in an hour? Well, it depends yes. on how many units. <laughs> uh, within one hour, we can probably do like a 10 unit smile design. Um, if, if you're thinking about full mouth uh, rehabilitation, that we will need a little bit more mm -hmm. because obviously we've got more units to design, uh, but we can do it in kind of a, a real time design. So, you know, you can scan the patient and just say, okay, we'll go for lunch or, or something. When you come back, then, you know, we'll show you the proposed smile design. And then from that point, when the, if the patient is happy and the dentist is happy, we can uh, convert it into a model and then make potty stents and stem pre stents, and then they can get the patient in next day for the, for the procedure. Right. Yeah. So, uh, you know, another great thing uh, with the intraoral scanners is just the ability to indicate, you know, include photos, include all of that kind of stuff right within your scanning software. So that provides information to the lab and then they're able to be able to, to do their job a little bit more easily. Um, but yeah, that turnaround time is based on complexity of the case. You know, yeah. if you're doing a whole bunch of stuff, you're lengthening, you're doing this or whatever that might be, um, then there may need a bit more communication for that yeah. one hour turnaround, so to speak. So it is doable, but it is case by case based. Exactly. And, you know, don't go be telling your labs all, <laughs> <laughs> well, evidence said, because <laughs> it is case by case, just a little, little notation there. Um, so let's pull up a poll here. Um, are you happy with your current iOS support and training? I think that's a really important question um, with regard to kind of where you are in your digital journey. And, and it's kind of just so that you have a really clear picture of what you're needing to do in the future to kind of be uh, really successful. So let's see what that looks like. We're just wrapping up at the top of the hour. While that is uh, coming into us, uh, as I'd mentioned previously, uh, we are uh, you know, heavily involved with the Medit. Uh, the i700 has just been released back in April. It is an incredible scanner. Uh, it, they've improved a lot of the speed, the accuracy. It's got a 180 degree rotational head. Uh, it is really, really, really great. Um, so definitely, you know, something to consider if you're on that kind of journey, if you've got reps coming to you, if you've got anything like that, and you know, they're trying to, to kind of, you're making those decisions, whether or not you should do three shape or ITER or a medit. And really the basis of it all is what are you using your scanner for? What are the limitations that you're experiencing? Are there any fees? How is the training and support and everything else in between? So from that last poll that just came up, it looks like everyone's fairly content with their uh, iOS support and training. 40% is a yes, 40% is a no, not really, I need a good one. And then we've got 20% that need a medit support. So for those of you that are wanting us to reach out, um, we, you know, we, We've got all of these results and stuff, and then we have no problem kind of reaching out to you and kind of helping you along the way and with anything that we can do to support you. So um, just as, as we are wrapping up here, which dentist should use a scanner? In my opinion, all dentists should use a scanner. There's so much kind of room for where that can grow and kind of the partnerships with the labs mm -hmm. that it doesn't matter if you're an orthodontist or you know prosthodontist or you're a gp or you're a perio or whatever it is that you are um there if there's a space for you and an intral scanner in any step of that, that practice the yeah. the dental industry is is kind of you know really great with that with you know all of this progress and success and everything else in between so it's really really exciting both guys and i have been in the industry for a long time oh. we have seen everything and this kind of you know task into this digital journey and this amazingness that's out there with all of this you know different opportunity for equipment and stuff is is incredible and uh, definitely something to consider and you know sometimes it can be a little bit scary because you know mm -hmm. new stuff is kind of tricky but you know specifically with the medic for example it really is pretty foolproof um you can pick it up you can pretty much start scanning right away you know, i've been busy training the quite a few offices in this last little bit and you know, within the, the first day or two, you know, they've already got their first almost full arch coming in and, you know, the, the support that that's needed is, is really, really clear 
uh, in the direction that, that they're going into. So that's awesome. So last uh, poll here is um, if you are interested in scanning with Evident and the Medit i700, uh, if you're interested in the design services that we offer, because you know, aside from being a Medit distributor, we're also one of the world's largest CAD CAM designers. Mm -hmm. And you know, we help Frontier as well with some of their CAD CAM designs. And uh, you know, we're, we're here to help however we can. And then finally, are you interested in CE credits? So just to wrap it up, final thoughts, Graz, scanning is a yes. Yes, it's fast, it's accurate, it's uh, it's fantastic. I mean, it makes my life easy as a, as a lab manager. So. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect, so uh, by all means, guys, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we're really pumped that you were with us and uh, we hope that we kind of provided you a little bit of insight. Uh, you know, if, if you've got any other questions, you feel free to email me directly, hit me up on Instagram as well, or the Evident Digital on Instagram. Um, and, you know, we're here to help in any com capacity that we can. So uh, great to uh, meet all of you today and uh, enjoy your day. Take care, guys. Bye.